we are going to discuss nano computing today. Now, as the word indicates, nano, it is 10 to the power of minus 9 of a meter. Uh, see, nano computing is again a trend. Uh, we have been talking about biocomputing, we have been talking about various forms of uh, smaller uh, computing. We talk about quantum computing the other day. So, nano computing is again part of that uh, system where miniaturization of computing plays a role. Now, the bottom line is why would you miniaturize things? Basically, because uh, I would miniaturize for the simple reason that given a certain amount of uh, uh, real estate, I can put more computing power in it. So, that is the essence of uh, nano computing. I would want to increase the density of computing on a given uh, space. So, my devices can have much more computing power uh, than what is possible today with silicon computing. So, there are different materials which you can use for nano computing and all of that. So, let us look at what nano computing brings to the table. So, it is a field which is at an intersection of um, chemistry, physics and computer science. Uh, and obviously, uh, <laughs> developing a nano computing infrastructure uh, is uh, not cheap, not easy because when you work at a nano computing level, the amount of care that you have to take in order to do manufacturing also becomes very intense. Uh, there are obviously a lot of uh, quantum effects which we have to consider while we do can nano computing because you are computing at such a small level uh, and the effects of quantum tunneling. Uh, this is a very interesting thing which I will uh, briefly talk about and superposition which you already know. Uh, because now we are not dealing with uh, uh, bigger areas, we are dealing with electrons. We are dealing with uh, the same thing which quantum computing used to deal with, but now uh, we are not trying to represent more information, but we are trying to use uh, various dimensions of the electron uh, to do more more computing. So, one of the things is quantum tunneling, which is in, in some ways related to quantum computing. Uh, superposition, I think we already know, is a combination of uh, is a concept from quantum computing where uh, a where we have the concept of a qubit, which can be in not just zero and one states, but lot of states in between, based on the probabilistic uh, nature. Uh, that word probabilistic uh, actually brings us to another concept, which is called quantum tunneling. So, electron, basically, as we know has both a particle nature and a wave nature. So, when you start exploiting the wave nature, you get quantum computing, uh, which is the uncertainty and also you get quantum tunneling. Now, you let us talk about this wave nature a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, an electron exists uh, both in a particle form and also in a wave form. And uh, its existence of a wave has not been exploited as much uh, to cross energy barriers. See, when we say an electron is moving from one orbit to another orbit, we are only interested in its particle nature. We are trying to describe its particle nature. But there are several energy barriers which can be crossed uh, uh, using the wave nature because I am sure you understand that a wave can travel over an obstacle far more easier, far more uh, uh, properly than, than a particle can because it is a wave and this wave nature of electron gets exploited through the concept of quantum, quantum ten, tunneling uh, in, in quantum computing. So, I will I'll just uh, say this that you know it is like saying that uh, if I have quantum tunneling, which is the ability of uh, electron to cross a higher energy barrier, uh, then lot of applications which were not possible earlier become uh, possible. Uh, so, so that is the uh, secret behind uh, uh, quantum tunneling. Now, you will ask what kind of applications are those uh, which, which become feasible when the wave nature uh, of the electron becomes possible. Uh, we will talk about that, but at this stage if you just say that 
uh, in nano computing we are exploiting the wave nature of, of, of the electron. I think at this point that might be adequate as we go and understand more about these devices the other things could make start making sense. In quantum computing there is another very important uh, aspect which is uh, the kind of materials which are used in nano computing. So, all materials will not work in, in nano computing the materials should be small and they should be usable at a smaller uh, miniaturization level at a nano level. So, uh, the standard electronics which we see is basically based on silicon whereas, nano computing largely is not based on silicon, but is based on materials like graphene, carbon nanotubes and like we talked about in biocomputing even DNA. So, these are some of the uh, particles or uh, materials which are used for nano computing, uh, which is a completely different kind of material because when we talk about a standard transistor or a standard uh, device, we always talk of silicon and, and we say how much is the silicon. Uh, here we do we talk of a material called graphene. Graphene is also a ca carbon kind of material arranged in a hexagon, it is a two layered uh, particle and uh, uh, it is an interesting material. Lot of research is going into graphene uh, to see whether it could be used for nano computing. Uh, so, these are all smaller, faster and more energy efficient devices uh, which can be made using computing because simply that the computing becomes smaller. Now, uh, uh, the nano scale transistors those of you who are familiar with transistor physics you would see there is something called NP, PN junctions, doping. So, it is basically to do with the flow of electrons uh, a bunch of electrons together uh, when they flow uh, you know that is what a transistor is aimed at the standard emitter collector uh, uh, configuration of, of a transmitter is based of a transistor is based on electrons and not one electron it is a bunch of uh, bunch of electrons a current is caused by a series of electrons moving uh, from one direction to the other. Now, in nano uh, technology we do not talk about a bunch of electrons we talk of a single electron. So, if you are able to do things with a single electron which uh, we do not do in our regular silicon or traditional computing uh, then we, we can do a lot more exploitation and obviously it is a very challenging technology to be able to deal with one electron at a point and, and be able to handle. So, uh, that is what is called as a nano scale transistor. So, a nano scale transistor is a transistor which deals with only one electron at one shot. Uh, so, uh, the flow of individual electrons that is what uh, a, a nano uh, transistor a nano scale transistor works with. This obviously requires uh, fabrication techniques which are more advanced uh, materials like graphene and carbon nanotubes which are also more advanced uh, and uh, you have to look at all those options. Uh, now, uh, there is another very interesting thing about uh, uh, nano computing see normally how do you make a transistor on a chip. So, you take a bunch of silicon remove uh, um, it is called subtractive manufacturing in, in some sense. You remove pieces of silicon which are not part of the transistor and you get a transistor. So, you start with a bigger piece start chipping away at all edges and what is left you make it into a transistor which follows certain characteristic. Now, in, in uh, nano computing uh, that is by the way called top down manufacturing. So, all of uh, traditional computing devices uh, they cause lot of wastage of material because they start with a big piece and chip away and uh, that is why they are called uh, uh, you know top down computing whereas, nano computing is bottom up they start with the smallest atom or molecule and then keep building it up. So, that it becomes larger and larger. So, that is why it becomes a far more efficient manufacturing process, but obviously it is technically challenging because you are <laughs> dealing with very small pieces and trying to do more additive stuff and making it bigger. So, you are adding up rather than taking a bigger piece and subtracting ok. Uh, and then there is uh, yet another interesting technology which is called uh, spintronics. Uh, <laughs> the brother of electronics is spintronics, which is possible using um, uh, nano computing. Now, I, I this is a very deep subject of research, but I will just 
say what is the highlight of spintronics. The basic point which is uh, I, I, in, in one line or one uh, small, small definition of spintronics would be uh, see an electron both has a charge as well as a spin. Uh, it spins either in the clockwise direction or spins in the anti-clockwise direction. Depending on that, it is called a positive spin or a negative spin. Now, so far in traditional electronics and of course, electron has a charge. So far in traditional electronics, uh, we have been exploiting only the charge aspect of the electron. We have never exploited the spin aspect of the electron. Now, what nano computing philosophy believes is that, you know, just like the charge can convey information, the spin can also be used to convey information. For example, you say the clockwise spin is 1, the anti-clockwise spin is 0. So, basically you are conveying information through the spin of the electron and also obviously the information is being communicated by the extent of the charge, whether a particular piece is becoming positive charge, then you make it 1. Uh, negative charge make it 0, but when you charge something there is a huge number of electrons which have to be there to create a positive charge or a negative charge. Whereas, here we are talking about each electron and it can become a bit just imagine we are talking about something which we can which is fantastic you just imagine the number of bits which are possible if you make each electron uh, uh, act like a bit uh, by saying the bit the electron which is spinning in one direction is a 1 electron spinning in another direction is a 0. So, that is called spintronics and it is another branch of nano computing I would say it is a sub branch of nano computing which probably uh, you know many years down the line could become a very uh, you know uh, fast growing branch. It promises devices that are faster and consume less power than the conventional electronic devices. So, uh, as I mentioned they use the spin of the electron in addition to their charge for processing the information. So, the underlying term here is they use the spin of the electron. So, that is what we call uh, spintronics which is also a branch of nano computing. Uh, and then uh, obviously, because what are the challenges in nano computing? There are lot, lot of challenges in nano computing because you know you are putting so much of electronics, so much of computation in such a small uh, piece like in, in a nanometer you are doing so much of computing. So, uh, managing heat becomes a bigger challenge. So, nanoscale devices can generate significant amounts of heat and they we will have to create new cooling strategies, new coolants, new different materials which can cool these chips very fast. So, that is a challenge. Obviously, building such devices to such miniaturization, such nano scale uh, is uh, not easy. There is a lot of defects, a lot of fabrication. I am not aware of any Indian location which is capable of making uh, you know nanotechnology. We, we always keep talking about it. Uh, also, there is the whole uh, line of interconnects and integration. Let us say part of your circuit is in nano computing. How do you interconnect it with the rest of the chips which may be in silicon uh, because suddenly the world is not going to become all nano computing. There is going to be a combination of silicon and there is a combination of uh, nano computing. So, uh, there is need for a cross technology interconnects and integration. So, somebody has to work that all out and whether you should use graphene for it, whether you should use carbon nanotubes for it, whether something like a DNA could be used for it, uh, you know those are all interesting uh, questions which which need to be uh, chased and handled. So, all in all uh, you know uh, there are uh, it is a very interesting technology. There are obviously uh, you know ethical and environmental concerns uh, because it is being an emerging uh, technology it raises con concerns about how the manufacturing is done, what are the environmental impacts of that uh, manufacturing, uh, you are introducing gra uh, graphene. Uh, and you are using graphene for nano computing, uh, you know what about the <laughs> toxicity of these novel materials, uh, are they going to be more toxic, uh, what, what care has to be taken and uh, all those ethical consideration. So, uh, all in all nano computing is a promising but challenging field, uh, it holds a potential to revolutionize how we think about computers, uh, it will bring immense computing power uh, to the table 
and I am sure it is, it is futuristic but an exciting field.